and go. What's up, Fight fans? Welcome to another edition of Split Decision MMA, <laughs> your weekly MMA podcast. Coming to you a day early. On a Thursday? On a Thursday. Thursday never Thursday. heard. Never heard. Thirsty Thursday. Oh, is it? Are you thirsty? I, I thought you said you was hungry. <laughs> I am hungry. I didn't eat. <laughs> you didn't eat? I haven't eaten yet. I'm still hungry. I'll be eating He's going to be all hangry halfway through here. In my shift. That's going to be awkward good. Anyway, yeah, we bring you all the news. <laughs> he works week. at a place with food. Yeah, I do. Bring you, <laughs> bring you all the news every week, all the rumors, all the bad. things that are going on in the world of mixed martial arts. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot going on this week. There's a couple little stories, but we can talk about some fights. We had some fights that happened last weekend. We have a couple fights going up this weekend. Uh, yeah. Is that, did Donald Cerrone use the aging app? We'll just jump into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just him. Huh? Cowboy Cerrone uh, turned the MMA world upside down with this cryptic Instagram message. Uh, he put up this picture of himself. Yeah, the aging app. Which, by the way, steals all your information and gives it to the Russians. To the so, Russians. Good for you. To the Russians. Uh, he said, just got off the phone with my old buddy. And at 155, it's kind of it's kind of our only option. You spelled R wrong. Cowboy. <laughs> the wrong. It's O-U. Anyway. Uh, he told me, Cowboy, let's go make this money. And if I can promise y'all something, this is a fight, y'all. Do not want to miss. <laughs> and, of course, it's on short notice. And that's it. So everyone was like, who's he talking about? Who's the old buddy? Is Dana the old buddy or is the guy he's fighting the old buddy? No, and then, I don't know. He said, uh, who's the old buddy? I thought he may be his manager. Maybe. No? Maybe. <laughs> uh, and then it came out, uh, I believe, today, like a few hours ago, right? This happened today? Yeah. Hey, don't you worry about the Thursday fuckery, Blake. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Just watch and enjoy. Simmer down. Like you normally do. Go uh, back to anyway. shifting them 18 gears or whatever you do. Uh, UFC president Dana White came out today and confirmed Donald Cowboy Cerrone will face Justin Homer Simpson Gaethje at the main event, UFC Fight Night 158, September 14th. <laughs> All right. I'm excited for this fight. I'm scared. I don't think it's a good it's not a good matchup for Cerrone. <laughs> he has been he has been knocked out before. Yeah. Cuz uh Gaethy just swings for the hills, bro. He, oh, for sure, nonstop. And, and doesn't mind sticking his own head out there to eat a few. Nope, likes to put the head down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh craziness. But this is a this is a fighter's fight. You don't need a calendar, Blake. You you work weekends, bro. This is a this is a fighter's <laughs> fight for sure. You oh know yeah. What I mean? So uh, we have seen... This is a wax on the nipples kind of fight, really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot it's of people... so exciting. Yeah, a lot it's of people exciting. are like, Ooh, this is the one. <laughs> this could be a great fight. I am, I am excited for this. I do, I do worry a little bit about Cerrone. Uh, he has been TKO'd and knocked out in the past. And Gaethje likes to throw and has heavy hands. Uh, but to me, this is a good measuring stick for Gaethje, too, to see where he's at in this old heap. You know? Yeah, well, again, with the... It's uh, the 155 heap, man. Yeah, but, but we on. also got Cerrone's... Uh, roller coaster. Yeah, you know but he's, what I mean? He's dad thrown now. He's on the upside. <laughs> Other than blowing his nose and making his eye explode, he's, he's doing well. Right. Yeah. That wasn't a good move. No, not a good move. <laughs> I mean, he was kind of losing that fight to begin with, but yeah. it was still, still anyway. anyway. Moving on from that. Uh, Darren Till. Darren Till is talking about moving up to uh, middleweight. So he's missed the welterweight limit twice uh, in eight of his fights. There are rumors that he is going to be um, moving up. He's putting on that freshman 15, right? Or 10 or He he flat I never out get that number right. posted a picture of himself on his Instagram. Remember that he had deleted and brought back after all that crazy stuff that happened in London. Uh, and he says, "Come in motherfucking middleweights." That's that's all he said. Wow. So I, I guess he's moving to middleweight. Who wrote that for him? Mayweather? <laughs> <laughs> Come no. den motherfucking I know, middleweights. I know it doesn't have nothing to do with it, but have you seen the Area 51 post with Mayweather? No. Like, it's just, it's just a bunch of letters, <laughs> and the only one you can read is, like, 51. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. So he's running. He's going to Naruto run out there with oh, all yeah. those other idiots. Yeah. But yeah. I, I like that everyone just all of a sudden forgot about Area 51 when that face app came out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they had to do something. Yeah, I think it was. The Ru- I something. think it was. It wasn't really the Russians. I yeah. think it's the American government that created FaceApp. Said it was the Russians, and they're like, "Hey, we need to get people distracted from Area 51. Give them an app that makes their face look old." Someone told me it was some guy named Epstein. I don't know what that's all about, though. But mm, I don't know. Weird. Uh, moving on from there, <laughs> Tito Ortiz uh, calling out kind of John Jones. I thought they fought before. <laughs> I could have swore this happened in like 2012, uh, somewhere in there. I had to look up Tito's record. I had to look up John Jones's record. I could have swore they fought somewhere in around the 2011, 2012 uh, time frame. But no, they have not ever fought. But he says, Tito Ortiz, I think I would do a lot better against John Jones than Daniel Cormier because 
This is Tito Logic. Okay. Tito M Logic. M M M MMA math with Tito Ortiz. Tito Logic also states that uh, deaf people have softer heads. <laughs> You remember when he said that about Matt Hamill? I know. And that they're easier. He said a few. And they're easier to knock out because they have softer heads. Right. <laughs> he says, according to according to him, I would do better against John Jones than Daniel Cormier because Cormier is a shorter guy with bigger legs and a bigger torso. He's a big guy, a big guy. John Jones is long and lengthy. I'm gonna get in the inside and overpower some some positions. But if it would be John Jones. I think I would at least have a great chance. I could, I could, I could get the win if I have a cha a camp like I did the one of the last eighteen weeks at hundred percent. Which, by the way, Tito Ortiz admits all of his losses were if he had a better camp or he had a great camp. He just had this back problem or he had Tito Ortiz is full of excuses. Anyway, uh, there really hasn't. But he's been, never used the seventy percent. No, no, no. no. Uh, there really hasn't anybody been to fight John Jones and get in his face and stay in his face. No. I'm I'm Gubs, lost. Gubson didn't get I'm in his lost face. at the shorter big guy. Is that like a green eyed? Everybody else, they want to strike him on the outside. Well, he's too damn long, and you can't do that. You got to get on the inside, and that's the way to fight him. As a coach and a fighter, that's how I would beat him. Well, Someone and, has to be aggressive enough to get him around and make him feel uncomfortable. Well, like we saw, Santos did get inside a couple times, and then that's yeah. where, that's where he got the punches in on. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think Tito Ortiz would have the best shot at dethroning John Jones? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Do you think Tito Ortiz would have the best shot at dethroning DC? No. <laughs> no. He had a pro he had a little problem with Shale. <laughs> yeah. Shale put, put, put Shale made him work. Yeah. So I don't know where he's at with his MMA math, but. <laughs> uh, another guy talking about John Jones, <laughs> which I don't understand. Anthony Smith continuing to chirp on Twitter. You got to stay relevant. You got to stay in the, the mix. You got to stay in the conversation. Um, that, that's the only thing I can say. I don't want to say nothing bad because I, I like Smith. I'm hoping that he puts something together and comes back. But I'm with you on, man, you just lost. Just stop, bro. Just stop. Anthony Smith apparently went on a recent interview and said that I've said it over and over again. Uh, I'm coming. There's no one who's going to stop me. Uh John Jones is like, I don't understand why these guys have to talk smack before before taking their L. And after I go and fight them with good sportsmanship and say nice things about them, they just keep going on and on. It's getting old. Uh, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I got to agree with Jones. Jones has been, since the beginning of this whole turn of ball and picogram, uh, picogram and Pico pictograms, running into a pregnant Everybody's lady. Everybody's on steroids. And running into a pregnant lady. He has dialed it back brothers. and become a little more humble. Uh, yeah. I just I don't understand after uh, what happened. I mean I mean no no you you know Anthony you know Anthony you, Smith lost you lost bro you could barely stand after that fight right and you're gonna still chirp and be like oh well I'm still gonna be the one to dethrone him I'm still gonna uh, you know he's got all these issues he's got this he's got that I just when you lose you lose man let it go right let it go <laughs> uh, Bellator. Has launched their featherweight Grand Prix. This is going to be nuts. This is going to be pretty crazy. Everything's official. The field size is twice of any of their other tournaments. You got 16 fighters competing in the tournament, including the champ, Patricio Ferreri, uh, Pitbull. Uh, and this is also going to be a million dollar prize to the winner. So not only has he got to defend his belt, right there, yeah, right, right. defend his belt, uh, but you also get a chance to win a million dollars. Right. It's got that Viacom money, baby. So I had it wrong. So eight people could fight twice in one night? So they said the reason why we're doing this thing is we felt we had so much talent that we couldn't do an eight-man tournament. So, yeah, that's basically what we got. The tournament kicks off. Bellator 226, September 7th in San Jose. You got Derek Campos against Daniel Strauss. Pedro Carvalho going up against Sam Cecilia. Uh, Tywin Claxton against Emmanuel Sanchez. Adam Borix against Pat Coran. And then at Bellator 228, you got – your champ, Pitbull Ferrari, going up against Juan Archuleta. Um, so then this isn't going to be the end of it. This is going to be like a quarterfinal, right? Yeah. This is just the beginning. This, is this so basically a semi? Quarterfinal thing, and then semi, and then finals, right? Okay. I don't even think it's that. You got eight guys fighting? 
No, 16. 16, right? But it's like eight each night. That's what I'm saying. Like eight right. each night. Right. So you got. So then we're going to end up with eight fighting each other four, apparently four. another night. So another night. each night, though, four guys are going to fight gonna twice, down right? To woo, and then it's going to get down to right? Something like that. I don't know. I don't know if it's single night or not. I haven't. No. I don't know if it's going to be both times. Let's see. Who just got the permission for their fighters to fight twice in one night? PFL. That, PFL. Okay. PFL. Never mind. Then That's, I'm back. I'm back. You're back. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> uh, yeah. So pretty crazy. It's hard, everybody. We got a lot of MMA to stay on top so of now. It was so much easier when it was just the UFC and KOTC. <laughs> Did you really follow KTC? Yeah, I did. Did I you? Got, I got cage fished. Did you? Remember? Yeah, yeah. And hung up on. <laughs> Me and my big MMA heart. Loving everybody. Trying to help everybody out. Feeling all Yamasaki and shit. <laughs> you know? Instead of the, what is it, you go like this? No, I had the big heart. You had the big heart. Big you turned upside down? Yeah. <laughs> like a cow heart. <laughs> it's not even shaped like a heart. I never understood any Are of Are cow's heart bigger, Carmichael? Tell me. Let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah, but speaking of Bellator, we did get to have... Bellator 224, right? Yeah. Bellator 224 happened last weekend. Bud versus Ruben on the Dazzin and I, I Paramount I felt it was, a, it was a better card than UFC Sacramento. You think so? I, Did you, you feel that way? Well, the main card, at way. least. The main and card, at least. Your main, Yeah, your main events, Julia Bud defended her belt against Olga Ruben. And I took Olga, and she went down in two minutes. Yeah. It was bad. TKO, body punches, and immediately calls out... Someone who is not in her weight class and someone who is not even in her promotion. She called out Gabby Garcia. Let's see it. Let's line it up. Rising heavyweight women's champion, uh, we could fighter. Bring back, we could bring back Golden Boy MMA with this fight. <laughs> no, you can't. No. No. No, no you can't. <laughs> she says she will go New Year's Eve to Tokyo. She doesn't care about the weight. Uh, she wants that fight. She wants to fight. Uh, Fire up the jet. Let's Gabby Garcia. It. And we do know that Bellator and Ryzen like to uh, exchange talent. So I think that would be very, very cool. Uh, she also said she's willing to offer a title shot to Leslie Smith, who did win her fight in that same uh, fight night. Wouldn't that be cool for Leslie Smith? To get a title shot? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good. Sure. Just desserts? <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's not how you really feel. I've seen the eyes. <laughs> sure. Good sure. for her. <laughs> I would rather see her go over and do the Gabby Garcia fight. Why not? Just what about Leslie Smith and Bud <laughs> against, against Gabby, Gabby Garcia? In a two-on-one handicapped cage match? Yeah. All right. <laughs> one steel chair. O- only one. Only Does one. it hang from the rafters and like someone's got to get it? Is it, is it the object on a pole? Is it object no, on a pole actually, match? it's going to be on the ground because that way she can't bend over to grab it. It's for oh, the two shorter fighters. All right. I want the coal <laughs> miner's glove match, which I never understood. A coal miner's glove match. Why is a coal miner's glove a weapon? Because uh, it's heavy. Is it? Coal's heavy. But is a coal miner's glove heavy? How many times have you got coal in your stocking? <laughs> Never. See? You don't know. I didn't have to. Nobody had a glove to be able to lift it up. I don't understand <laughs> the coal miner's glove match in uh, wrestling, and for that's what I'm referring to. Anyway, we'll move on from there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry we got distracted. Just got distracted. I'm still, I'm still on uh, rosin and broken glass. Kumite style. But anyway, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, and then we did have UFC Sacramento, UFC uh, Fight Night, the Random Man versus Lad, UFC Fight Night 155, UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus 13. Uh, hashtag uh, UFC Early Stoppage. Was it? Was it? Which fight? Which fight? Which one are you hashtag? <laughs> early Stoppage on. I at first I would hashtag hashtag Lad, but then when I seen when she tried to get up after, yeah, that fight was over. Yeah. All right. So let's start. But I will say Araya. That was we'll kind of... All right, hold on. Let's, let's start. Okay, the, okay. There we go. Benito Lopez gets the win over Vince Morales. Uh, Brianna Van Buren gets the win over Livia Renato Souza and immediately spoils the UFC's plans for announcing their own fight. Uh, You're sa- not going to do it, are you? Yeah, hell yeah. All Says right. that she wants to fight at the UFC San Francisco card. Now, the UFC San Francisco card allegedly is an ESPN Plus card um, that has not been announced. ESPN, if you go to ESPN's... Um, Website, you can see that it's technically scheduled. It's technically scheduled, but it's not. They have no information on it because the Chase Center isn't officially completed yet. I think it, yeah. So the very first Chase Center event will be September fifth, and it's right. Metallica concert. Right. Uh, and this is where the Warriors are going to be playing in San Francisco, the new the new place. So, um, so you're going to have fuel. You're going to have fire. You're going to have <laughs> things that you desire. And some MMA. And some MMA. UFC on ESPN Plus 19, UFC Fight Night 161 has no card, no bouts. Uh, rumor is 
Uh, Joanna Jujed kick against my uh, Michelle Waterson, Karate Hottie. That would be an awesome bout. Yeah, especially now that Joanna's got those things added. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. And the fight would be good, too. It's targeted as the thing. So this would be the first time they've been to the Bay Area since 2010, UFC 117, that happened at the Oracle Arena, which is in Oakland. But they were just in Sacramento. I mean, you can throw a rock so, from the Bay Area to Sacto. Van Buren says that she wants this. She, she lives in Gilroy, I guess. And she's like, I want to be fight local. I'll be ready by October. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. So if the UFC goes to, the, to San Francisco, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe we get Lad on another card. Maybe, well, uh, then we got Jonathan <laughs> Martinez going against uh, and gets the win with a knockout with a KO with the knee. Three fifty four round three against Pinyang Lu. Uh, Ryan Hall over Darren Elkins. Juliana Pena coming back. You were from, right about Elkins. He does not need to be on a main card. <laughs> Juliana Pena uh, gets the win over Nika Montano. Pretty good win for her coming back from pregnancy. Right. Gets a win over a former champion. I, I I just expected a lot more out of Nico. I don't I don't know what they've been doing in her camp. Um, it 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 was just lagging. And because rankings don't matter, and the cronies and crack reporters that make the rankings, uh, they have pushed immediately Juliana Pena to number four in the women's band and weight division. But she hasn't lost. Just one fight back. I know, but she hasn't lost. What was she? I want to know. I, I probably should have looked at this beforehand. What she was when she left the rankings? She was not a mom, right? But and where now, where she was ranked? Now she's a mom. She has lost. She's lost three times, sir. Right, but okay. <laughs> but her last win was Cat. Her last win was Kat. Jessica I. That's a good. That's a good list. Yeah, she, you know, she got a couple people on there for yeah. sure. Oh, and she, say who she lost to? Shevchenko. Come on. Oh yeah. I'm not saying she didn't lose to someone tough. Yeah, so she's a top fiver. I, 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 all right, anyway. Say she's a top fiver. I can't. Say it. Well, just say uh, she's a top fiver. Officially. God damn it, Dodge. Just say she's a top fiver. Officially on the UFC ranking, she's a top fiver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Due to those reports. That, that's, the, that's the best I'm going to get. <laughs> Even after the camera goes off. I could hold him in a noogie. He's, <laughs> he doesn't matter. The UFC says she is, so I guess she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't think she is. <laughs> You're going to have to go ahead and break it, Frenchie. Uh, Andre Tachifili gets the win over Shaman Morales. KO. Three minutes in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andre, I mean, touchy. Touchy Feely. Yeah. Uh, John Allen gets the win over Mike Rodriguez, and that was your ESPN Plus prelim card. Still on ESPN Plus on your main card. Okay, now let me vent for a little bit. So I have Fight Pass. Uh huh. And this fight was on the Fight Pass. Which, which fight? The prelims? Or the whole thing? No, no, the prelims. But you could also get it on ESPN Plus, uh-huh. which I also pay for. Uh huh. Why do I pay for both? Because one of them is going to get you I'm like stupid two fights <laughs> uh, every month on the pay per view. The other one's going to get you like a bunch of fight cards. And now the Contender Series is on the Plus too. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> but you don't have the library on the Plus. No, I don't. You and need- I and I do like the library. And and you don't have. Uh, Invicta. Invicta. On the plus. Or yet. KOTC. Or whatever else is. I can't tell you the last time I, I literally went and watched the KOTC. Or uh, Kung fight. Loon. Or, uh, yeah, all these other things that are on right. there. Right. KSW. Yeah, you're right. I know you're right. <laughs> Marvin Vittori gets the win over Cesar Ferreira. Uh, Carl Robertson over Wellington Terman. Josh Emmett gets the win over Mirced Bektik. Emmett, I mean. What do you, where, where do you see him doing? Just keep on rising. Yeah, he's in, he's featherweight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have to look at you know where where the rankings are. See, because those matter. Um, <laughs> we could see where is he? Where is is he ranked? I mean, he's got to be ranked, right? It's got to be a thing. Let's see, featherweight Josh Emmett. I mean, he he went up. He went a spot. He's now in the top ten. Right. He's now in the top ten. Can he get past the the, the gatekeepers at four and five? Can he get past Frankie Edgar and Z- the Zabist? Yeah. And Korean Zombie and Jeremy Stevens? I mean, has he? Let's see who he's fought. Let's see. Let's see if I can remember all these. There's so many fighters these days. Yeah. He's already, he's already beat Jeremy. Oh, he lost Jeremy Stevens. So that kind of tells you. Okay. So he's going to be stuck five to eight. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he can. Get a good streak together, but it's going to be very tough. Jeremy Stevens already pushed him down a little bit. And hope uh, that he can leapfrog certain people, yeah. get around him. You got uh, Uriah Faber coming out of retirement, the California kid, a.k.a. the middle-aged guy, 
the the California middle aged guy, I guess is what they renamed. The next him. contender in his division, my friend. Uh, defeated Ricky Simon at TKO, forty six seconds. Do you feel the stoppage was early? <clears throat> it's hard to say. You, you feel the stoppage was early. <laughs> yes. Do you feel the stoppage is yes. early? <laughs> yes. I have a lot of people that I, I when I first saw it, I was re, I was through gifts and that sort of stuff. When I actually went back to watch it, uh, he was pretty wobbly from the different angle. He was, he was. From the different angle, I think maybe, but uh it, not as wobbly as the next fight, but Correct. Right. Really, really tough. He then goes on to call out Henry Cejudo. Yeah. Saying he wants a title shot. He deserves it. He deserves a title shot? He first of all was not ranked. He deserves a shot at and a title. And because rankings don't matter, <laughs> and the crack reporters over at the UFC ranking system, who are the ten guys or fifteen guys that make this, will put up their shitty names up here later. Um They've put him at number 14. Uriah Faber coming out of retirement. against the champ? Uriah Faber coming out of retirement is number 14 now in your rankings. Um, Didn't we have a guy who wasn't even in a weight division come back after three years, fight for the belt, and win it? Yeah, but he was still, like, he left as a champion. (laughs) Uriah Faber has never won a title in the UFC. Oh, he's got a title. As a guy who's never won a title in the UFC. <laughs> yeah. He has not held a belt since he lost to Henan Burrell. That's his goocher. That's his that that that's where it goes wrong for him is when he fights for a title. They should always Actually, show no. him. He hasn't held a belt since he lost to Jose Aldo. Back in WEC. Oh. So he's never held a belt in the UFC. He never held a belt in the UFC. He fought the for the Bantamweight title uh to Dominic Cruz. He lost. He fought for the interim belt against Henan Burrell. He lost. He fought for another belt for, against Henan Burrell. He lost. He fought for uh, the Bantam Bay belt again against Dominic Cruz, and he lost. A lot of losing. Uh, and he's calling out Henry Cejudo. Now, Henry Cejudo, of course, likes to talk trash. It gets cringy as he wants to be and says, careful what you wish for. But I think the more However, you do it, the better you're going to get at Don't it. you think Aljamain Sterling, Rafael Sunsau, Peter Yan, Pedro Munoz, all these guys have a bigger stake to the claim at Bantamweight for a title? Let's see Dominic Cruz against Faber. Yes, I would be paying for that. Yes. Let him. I don't know why, but why not? That's top five guy, top ten guy. I would be okay with him fighting someone in the top ten and then maybe someone in the top five to get a title shot, but I just don't think – and I don't care. I got friends out there that are telling me Uriah Faber versus Henry Cejudo the next time they need to have this fight. The next time that Henry Cejudo defense is against Wright would sell more pay-per-views than anybody else on that list. Do no, you agree it, with that? No, I disagreed because I because everybody knows that when he fights for a title... He loses. I wouldn't say it, yeah. It's the just odds, not, it's, the the odds, odds have been against, against him. him. Yes. Do you feel that that's a fight that you could sell? Or I don't think... For I don't me, think... as a fan who's been watching this sport for a long time, I got to see a reason. You can't just give me... Uriah Faber came back, he won one fight, give him a title shot. I want to see him fight a top 10, a top 5, and then right. I would buy the title I shot. I say like I said last weekend, putting Uriah on a card mm-hmm. sells more tickets. For sure. Putting Uriah for a title shot doesn't sell the card. I would agree with that. that that's where I would say. Now, if you put him, like you wanted to do a whole, uh, let's say, Northern California card. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, you you put Uriah on there again, not for a title shot, but I mean you got Jimmy you know, Rivera above him, who he lost to. You know what I mean? Like do you you think? Yeah, I don't know. I just I can't see him going for a title shot. How come they've never had a fight at the O? At the O? The Oakland Coliseum. How come they never oh, done fights there? They don't do fights outside, man. No, no, no. The where they do like the skating on ice and all that. In the Oracle Arena? Yeah. They have. Have they done fights in the Oracle? Yeah. That was the one we just talked about, UFC 117. as Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen, oh, too. Sorry. Sorry. It's happened. That was the sorry. last time that they were in the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Uriah Faber, good for you, man. You're not in the conversation. You're not in the conversation. You shouldn't even be thinking you're in the conversation. Fight a top 10 guy. Fight a top 5 guy. Maybe we'll talk. But again, like I told you earlier, you can't say that because there have been people that talk themselves into fights. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you got Jermaine <laughs> Durandame gets the win over Aspen Ladd. 16 seconds. Was it stopped early? No. Hashtag early stoppage. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Question mark. You right can't off, add a question mark to a hashtag. Yeah, yeah, right off, I did say it was early stoppage. And then? 
And then as they started to show angles later of her trying to get up or try to move around, uh-huh. it, stopping the fight was the best thing for her. This is Aspen Ladd's first loss in her career. This now puts her at 8-1. and one. We have obviously seen her struggle to make weight at bantamweight. Does she have what it takes to move up to featherweight? She needs to at find 145. She needs where to find no a mean. Else. She needs to find a meanness where there is no one else because they don't have a band or a featherweight division in the UFC. They have a featherweight division over in Bellator, um, but they do not have one in the UFC other than Amanda Nunes is the champion. There's no other contenders. They move bantam weights up and around. However, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you, it, there's obviously something wrong with the weight cuts. There is. There is. She's had three missed or three troubled weight cuts or whatever. Yeah. Whether you want to call and, the and one where she got them, sick. They've been, they've been blamed on different things. This uh, last one, they tried to say problems. she was nervous. The only reason she was up there shaking and moving around and crying and looking in pain is because she was the main event in her hometown and she was nervous. That's a little I bit of weight. I call BS, That's man. a little bit of weight. I, I call BS. I know. Good, I, co- good cop, bad cop. I, I think there's obviously <laughs> some sort of weight cut issue, and I don't know what it is. I wish Aspen Ladd the best. She's fought some tough opponents. She's done Yeah, I mean, we just we, we well. went through. We looked at her, her, the people she's fought. I mean, and, and like I said to you earlier, uh, to the people who are calling Jermaine Randame a slouch or a Let's nobody. Let's look at her. Jermaine is, a, nine a break. In, is 9 and 3. She's a former champion. The only people she's lost to are all current champions. Right. She's lost to Vanessa Porto, Amanda Nunes, and Julia Budd. Right. Amanda Nunes has the belt, two belts in the UFC. Julia Budd, we just talked about, has the belt in Bellator. Vanessa Pelzo- Porto has a belt in Invicta. Right. So you can't say Jermaine and she wa- And she walked away from the 145 division because she didn't want to have to fight Cyborg. And I completely understand that because if you don't have faith in yourself being able to do something, it's not going to happen in the ring. Yeah. Uh, I think... Jermaine Duraname, again, looking at the rankings that don't matter, Jermaine Duraname has the clearest shot at Amanda Nunes at bantamweight. Um, possibly, since you decided to throw Juliana Pena as number four, we could put Jermaine Duraname against Pena, and that would be a great fight, um, and, and maybe a title eliminator. Um, yeah, I just don't see Pena against Nunes. Uh, the, the, and the only reason I would say uh, uh, Randa May against Nunes is because she's fought her. Yep. So she has an idea of what she's getting into. Yep. So. I mean, it was, it was quite, it was 2013. It's, it's some time, and that was at the start of, of uh Yeah, Nunes but you his. even admitted, if someone told you in 2013 that Nunes would be a champion. Nope. Not, not, not you, anytime soon. No, nah, you, you wouldn't have signed not, on earlier. Not, not at that time, no. Because yeah. she's, but she has, she's, she's one of those people that every time she's come, come back from a fight, it's she's just been better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they're obviously working the right direction in her camp and in her gym. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so yeah, I would like to see Jermaine Randy. I think get the next title shot against uh, Amanda Nunes. However, again, they're still trying to push the Amanda Nunes versus Cyborg. Um, I'm telling you, I, seen, I don't know if that I rematch seen, is at 145. I or seen that Cyborg's coming to. I think it's Felicia Spencer. I think that's who she's fighting next. Look it up. Let's look that up. There you go. Huh? It's announced. That's next weekend. That's at the pay-per-view. Yeah. All right. See? So, I mean, so after this, if, if she wins against Felicia? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you got that as the co-main, right? Yeah, Chris Cyborg against Felicia Spencer. So, if Felicia Spencer... If Cyborg wins, she would go against Nunes for the rematch. If not, JDR. And it, but I mean, I mean it's two different but, weight but classes. What, but if, it's two different weight classes. Oh, is it? Well, yeah, because this is featherweight. Amanda Nunes is currently, well, she's the title holder at featherweight and at bantamweight. Right, she's, yeah. So JDR is at bantamweight. JDR would get the first crack at Nunes' bantamweight title. If Cyborg wins this fight, she gets a rematch for the featherweight title. Okay, and she would have to she would have to defend the Bantam first, right? Uh, Which one did she just fight for? I think she just fought for the Bantam weight title. So she so she has to she, defend featherweight. Okay, she has to defend the featherweight. Okay, next. and but the, again, the only person they still have in the featherweight division besides Amanda Nunes is Cyborg. That's what I mean. <laughs> so you're just gonna keep giving her title shots until she gets it. And or? this and this get this fight is, or the the next weekend's fight will be her last fight 
on her on contract. contract. Yep, and she's already mentioned and hinted at going to Bellator. Wow. She tweeted that out uh, not too long ago. Anyway, we do have fights this weekend. UFC on ESPN 4. Big ESPN, not plus. I don't got to subscribe for this BS. I just got to have a regular <laughs> sports package. I can watch this. And this Happy. is and and again, watch these numbers. They'll have record numbers. AT and T Center, San Antonio, Texas. This is UFC on ESPN four. Es UFC on ESPN. Dos Santos versus Edwards. UFC San Antonio. Check this out. Prelims: Domingo Perlarte going against Felipe Corrales. Mario uh, Batista going against Jin Su Sun. Ray Borg against Gabriel Silva. Roxanne Madoffrey going against Jennifer Maya. Sam Alvey against Kildison Abreu. Uh, Raquel Pennington against Irene Aldana and Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres against Steven Peterson. Okay, before you go, how many fights will that make this year for Alvy? How many fights this year? This year. What well, did he have a goal? Yeah, I want to know where he's at so far. Let's see. Let's look at it. one. Oh, he fought yeah. three times last year. He fought once this year. Sure. Okay, and it has not gone well. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Moving on to your main card, two big old heavyweights, Andre Arlovsky against Ben Rothwell. Come on, big Ben. I believe this fight has already happened at some point. I got to believe this is a rematch. I'm going to bring this up. I know I've seen this fight before. We're going to scroll. Wah. Ben Rothwell, yep. right there. Affliction Band. That's right. It was the very first Affliction card. Big old thing they did. That was a... 2008. 2008. Affliction, the t Eleven company. years ago. We're Congratulations the to these guys. Still getting paychecks in the UFC. Uh, these guys, yeah, they, so they fought way back Holy then. Holy shit. Yep. Now you got Andre like the Elder Scrolls and something. Ben Rothwell. Uh, Alexander Hernandez is going against Francisco Trinaldo. James Vick against Dan Hooker. That's going to be that's that's going to be lights out. Greg Hardy against Juan Adams. Juan Adams uh, dodges new BFF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm never going to root for Greg Hardy. Yeah, ever. I'm glad he's not the co-main event though. I'm All glad. Right. Of course, he's going to be on the main card because it's ESPN and they got to put those guys out on ESPN. Uh, Aleski Olenek will go to him against Walt Harris. Can we call him Walt Disney Harris because he's such a character? <laughs> no. Oh, all right. No. Uh, and <laughs> Rafael Dos Anjos, if our uh, good pal Joey was here, he'd say Rafael Two Hands. Yeah, with the handlebar mustache. Uh, going to him against Leon Edwards. I don't know. You don't know? Who are you calling that one? I noticed that I haven't like moved this thing. Ever? There, look <laughs> there we that. go. But it was one, the next one. One next one. We were good. We were good. I don't know, Le Leon Edwards. I worry about you, bro, because you took three piece in a soda from George Mazdaval <laughs> after his fight. He was not expecting it. And Dos Anjos has got some heavy hands, yeah, and fast hands, yeah. That's why there's two hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take Edwards. Oh, I'm gonna take Dos Anjos. Okay, yeah, I'm taking Dos Anjos. And again, it was it's a split decision. It is a split decision. There you go. That's how it is. That's how it works out. That's it. That's your week of fights. Uh, make sure you go over to Shirtsicle slash SDMMA. Shirtsicle.com slash SDMMA. Pick yourself up a Fight Nighty Chill shirt right here. That's yeah. like Ashley Evans Smith, yeah. who just recently had to pull out of her fight. We haven't heard why yet, though, right? I haven't heard why. So I didn't want to. Maybe we should contact the inside source, see what he says. Yeah, I will. I will. Uh, make sure you pick up your Pride Style shirt, of course, your OG shirt. You can make sure you head over to. What do we got? Dependable Solutions. Dependable Solutions. Walkie Craft. Walkie Craft. Uh, check, check out check the banners on the bottom check the banners on the back check out represent limited man we got our uh, Diaz flag that we always fly here because we represent the 209 uh, we're going to have to readjust it so we can get the, the R down but, yeah. but we're going to be redoing the whole studio redoing the so, studio. so uh, look forward to that stand by for that but anyway quick shout out to, to represent reaching out on us giving us showing us some love for our uh, Nate Diaz has a posse sticker if you don't have a Nate Diaz has a posse sticker make sure you hit us up in the comments either on YouTube or Facebook live or in our Instagram we will try to send one out to you yeah we're not going to lie when they first contacted us we thought we were in <laughs> <laughs> we almost but burned we, we almost burned the whole studio down but uh, we uh, yeah we were <laughs> and that's it. That's your week of fights. We will talk to you next week. Have a good night.